Ireland has an impressive Heineken Cup pedigree. Munster have been crowned champions twice, as have Leinster, while Ulster, winners in 1999, were runners-up two years ago. But spare a thought for Connaught, the unsung fourth Irish province. They're at the wrong end of the Pro 12, but have qualified for a third consecutive Heineken Cup campaign. Their new coach this season is someone who knows what it takes to win it. Pat Lamb was captain of Northampton when they beat Munster 13 years ago. Well, I knew that I wanted to come back to the Northern Hemisphere at some stage. I, I just thoroughly enjoyed it before. Two of my kids were born here. Um, and then, you know, the, I came up with Samoa in the November Internationals and I was approached by Connacht and a couple of other clubs. But when I let, sat down and looked at Connacht and I saw the history and, uh, and what, what it's all about and, and where they're trying to go, and they had a real clear vision where they want to be in five years' time, and that really excited me. We've got a, 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 a province that want a striving to get better, and they're, they're right obviously at the bottom of the pile as far as the Irish clubs uh, go, uh, Irish provinces, but uh, it's where they want to go is what excites me. One of their first signings was Craig Clark, who captained the Chiefs to both of their recent Super Rugby titles. A big part of the move um, to come up here was to really help contribute to, to making uh, Connacht a, a better team and, and getting better results. So I personally have a drive to help that. But if we go about things the way we say we are with Pat and, and the systems we've installed and, and, and play the way we want to play, then um, we'll get a few good results. And, and hopefully climb up the table. One of you is there, one, the rest, two of them are going around the far side. You get there, you come back, you come back. Lamb may bring a wealth of experience from overseas, but the secret to turning things around may be found closer to home. One of his first moves was to appoint three captains, Gavin Duffy, John Muldoon and Michael Swift, men who personify what's known as Connaught Man. The, the key is when establishing a culture um, around, you know, we, around who we are. And um, as a group, we identified what a Connacht man is. You know, he's respected, uh, he's committed, he's a team man, he's tough. And, um, you know, those three guys have been here. You've got one guy, Gavin Duffy, who's, who's, who's from the area, who's, who's gone on to represent Ireland and, um, and been a real servant as, as a leader. You've got John Muldoon, who's played, uh, you know, played for Ireland as well. He's from here as well. He's a Connick born and bred. And then you've got Michael Swift, who's played the most games. Those two, John and, and, and Michael, have played the most games in the area. So um, when you talk about what that person is, you want to you want to see it in the flesh, and those three certainly do that. Well, simply, I'm living the dream because I didn't grow up dreaming to play for anyone else. Obviously, I had a stint in Harlequins in, in, in the UK, but this was always kind of the dream, I suppose, was to play for my local club, Ballina, um, play a lot of Gaelic football. I wanted to play for Mayo, I wanted to play for Connacht, I wanted to play for Ireland. That was, you know, growing up, I was I was those guys out in the back garden. I was Eric Elwood chipping the ball over the trees trying to catch it again. And uh, so for me to run out in the sports round is, is a dream come true. And um, that was the biggest thing, I suppose, when the RFU was trying to make a decision a couple of years ago whether to get rid of Connacht or persist and um, thankfully they persisted because there's so many guys within within Connacht who, who have that ambition and have that drive and that dream to play for Connacht and ultimately play for Ireland and if the province wasn't here there'd be a, you know, a whole slice of the country not playing rugby. We don't have a team of superstars and that it's, we have the least amount of international experience uh, across all the teams in the Rabo Direct. But what, what it does is it brings it right back to rugby, what it's all about, the real team ethos that, you know, we have to fight for everything, whereas some teams can, you know, rely on a, on a superstar to get them through. We, we can't. I love that. It's a true, true team game. His view is uh, from the other side of the world. You know, he's achieved so much in his rugby career, but he's also coached in New Zealand and Samoa, and, and that's, uh, I suppose, they a different way of doing things on there, naturally enough. And, but it was also very interesting to see when he came up here, he saw a lot of good in Connacht, and he's, he hasn't come in and said, right, I want to change everything. He, he's really taken our strengths, and, and as you touched on there, the, the culture and the strength of, I suppose, a Connacht man um, is something that Pat was very keen to, not just keep up and maintain, but to, to improve on. Lamb's appointment is one of a number of positive developments Connaught have made recently, but the debate over the European Cup has left the future somewhat uncertain. Oh, the Heineken Cup has had such an impact um, on Irish rugby, firstly, because uh, you know, Munster and Leinster have been so successful and that's really kind of captured the imagination. And then when we've been fighting for so long to get into it, and thankfully Leinster did us a, a favour a couple of years ago, um, our season ticket sales went from 300 to 3,000 in the space of two or three months. And that was just a phenomenal growth and interest in the game in, in the west of Ireland and, and Connacht especially. And it's really been the competition that has caught the most 
imagination um, in the province and um, you know, be it whether you're in the Ambulance or European, there has to be some form of European rugby and uh, I don't know, hopefully they'll come to our senses soon enough and that everyone will be uh, playing rugby again next year across the continent, you know.